Gratitude is a killer of destiny. When you are thankful, you have your thankful. An atmosphere of joyfulness is the breeding ground for miracles. I came as your prophet to announce to you by the authority of God on my life that this year will not end until your season changes. is a liar the devil can steal your joy ah ah the devil didn't give you that joy that devil can take it from you the bible says the joy of the lord is my strength you know what it is not the water outside the boat that sinks the boat it is the water that enters inside the boat that sinks the boat in other words it is not what happens to you that matters it is what happens in you that matters the goal of every satanic or demonic attack is to steal your joy. Why? Once the enemy succeeds in stealing your job, he has succeeded in stealing your strength. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hold on to your joy. Sustain, maintain, retain your joy. Why? In Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 says, my own words, even if there is no business, the fig tree will not blossom. Even if there will not be fruit in the vines, your wife is not pregnant yet or you don't have kids yet. Even if the labor of the olive shall fail, all your businesses are falling through. No money, no job, no business, and the fields refuse to yield that increase. There's no profit, there's no increase anywhere. And the flock be cut off from the fold. The harder you walk, the poorer you are. There's destruction. There's, there are losses around you. And all of these catastrophe and calamities are happening to you that if you look at your storehouse, your bank account is empty. There's nothing in the storehouse. What should you do? Throw your up, hands up in the air and start to lament? No. Verse 18, the man says, Yet! Somebody shout, Yet! I'm sorry I'm not talking to the right congregation this morning. Somebody holler, yet! Yes. Regardless, in spite of what I see around me, yet, I will! So joy is a decision. I choose to rejoice. Whether my wife is pregnant or not, I have a job, I have a husband, I have money or not, yet, I will what? Come on. Rejoice in the Lord. I will Joy in the God of my salvation. What does that tell you? Salvation is an interesting word. It means peace. It means prosperity. It means healing. It means deliverance. It means protection. The God of my salvation only functions in an environment of joyfulness. That's why if you watch my television program, my opening statement is an atmosphere of joyfulness is a breeding ground for miracles. The reason some people are not experiencing miracles is because they are depressed. And once you are depressed, you soon will be oppressed. Job is not predicated on happenings. Something has to happen for you to be happy. That's why it's called happiness. But Job, Galatians 5, 22 and 23, it is a fruit of the Spirit. So for the fruit of the spirit is peace, is love, peace, joy. In Romans it says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but what? Righteousness, peace, and what? Joy in the Holy Ghost. Why is it important to maintain your joy? Because if you lose your joy, watch this, you will fail in the day of adversity. Joy guarantees strength. And strength is required for victory. So, Hannah came to church one day. Shiloh was praying, fasting, crying, complaining, murmuring, griping. It was time to eat, to break her fast. The husband came and said, honey, some food prepared. Big feast in Shiloh. Hannah said, I'm not going to eat. Hannah did all he could to make sure that Anna ate something, but... 
Hannah refused. She was so depressed. When Elkanah found he couldn't persuade the wife, Hannah, Elkanah left her and went home with Penina and the other kids. So Hannah was left alone in the church all by herself. And she came to the altar. And she was crying and praying hysterically, you know. So the man of God, Eli, unfortunately at backsliding at that time, couldn't discern in the spirit, came around and saw the woman. And like, Hannah! <laughs> Nine o'clock! You don't shack a go this morning. And I looked at the man of God and like, excuse me, pastor. I'm not drunk. I'm just ventilating my depression, my grievance, my hurt, my anger, and all of that stuff. But the same man of God switched from the flesh to the spirit. Ay, 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 And turned and said in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 17, he says, the Lord grant thee the petitions of your heart. And the next thing you saw was, next verse, 18. Let the handmaid find grace in the side, Hannah said. So the woman went her way and did it. Help me read the next line, church. And her countenance was no more. Why did you think the Holy Ghost interjected that in the scripture? To let you know that as long as Hannah was sad, her miracles did not happen. An atmosphere of joyfulness is the breeding ground for miracles. So the goal of the attack is to sniff out your joy. Once joy is out of the scene, there is no miracle that will happen there. So Hannah gave birth to the baby because the right atmosphere of joyfulness had taken place or had been created. So conception had taken place. Hannah was coming to church on a Sunday morning like this to give thanks to God. And she was dancing. And all her friends were dancing with her. And she says, praise the Lord. I've got a testimony to give. So Hannah was sharing her testimony. And hear what she said. Chapter 2, verse 3. First Samuel. It says, talk no more exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. Those of you who are accusing God like I've been praying and fasting. I've sowed seed. I've served God. I've done this. I've done that. Nothing is happening for me. And yeah, 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 yeah. Hannah says, be quiet. You're arrogant. You're proud. He says, really? I was like you. He says, for God is a God of what? Knowledge. He says, by him, actions. In other words, what Hannah was saying is that you could pray all you like and all you want. If the composition of your heart is sadness, God is not listening to what you are saying. He's watching how you are behaving. He says, he weighs your actions. Faith is not just believing, but faith is behaving. Your behavior is more important than your belief. Because what you believe, you behave, and what you behave, you become. You can't tell me you believe God for healing, and you behave sick. Yes, you've prayed for a baby and a man of God had prophesied like I do every Sunday morning in this place. But God is watching your countenance. Many of you here, the Lord is lifting you. It's your season of laughter. And you live here sad. Ah, he weighs your action. Action that says speak louder than words. It is easy to come to church and pray for money and live here and complain about what you have prayed for. You pray for joy, for miracles in your home, for fulfillment. May you behave depressed and sad. That's why the miracle is not happening. You say, Pastor, why? An atmosphere of joyfulness and celebration is the breeding ground for miracles. No joy, no miracle. So, Keep your joy. Tap your neighbor and say, keep your joy. You know why? Once your joy is gone, the miracle is forfeited. And it's a fruit of the Spirit. So, the goal of the enemy for the attack in your family is targeted at your joy. 
The devil is a joy stealer. You know, the way some of us behave, we act like though the whole, in fact, all the troubles in this world are upon our heads alone. Until you hear somebody else's story, you will not discover that your own pales in comparison to the other person. Like somebody said, I was complaining that I didn't have shoes until I met a guy without feet. Which would you prefer, shoe or feet? Let's give you the shoe and collect your feet so that you can wear your shoes in your hands. Man of God, I feel sorry for God sometimes. Because I just believe that in heaven, God will just sit down and say, Angel, four to four, come. She's that my daughter. She's complaining she don't have children. And I gave her husband. Look at that one, doesn't have husband. But look at how joyful she is. And they say, I don't tire. So you tire. I say, me, I'm weak. <laughs> this is God. He say, look at that one. And he's a Nigerian. Look at the way he's praying, 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 praying. He's praying for a car. The last time I gave him a job, a contract, he didn't even thank me. He say, he, you see her? He said, I see her. So sometimes I just feel sorry for God, like, ha, ah, these Nigerians, what do I do to them? Always complaining. Hmm? Five years now, I don't have a job. Thank God you are a graduate and not a granot. You know, sometimes we don't count our blessings, we discount them. I know you want a job! I know you want babies. I know you want prosperity. But the very things you are doing are the things that are scaring those things away from you. So what am I saying? I'm saying that you must keep your joy. So help me preach to your neighbor. Tell him keep your joy. Every evil pronouncement against your destiny, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Welcome to Miracle Assembly, a place where miracles are assembled and distributed. We have a mandate of liberating people for quality living. The Word of God comes alive through the unction of the Holy Spirit upon His servants, Pastor Jeffrey and Pastor Loveth Iyanoa, as they teach and preach weekly. We invite you to join us every Wednesday at 5 p.m. prompt and on Sundays for our first service at 7.30 at 147 Upper Owina Road by Awotobu Police Station off Argo Street via Ekewen Road, Benin City and for our second service at 9.15 a.m at 54 Boundary Road, before Ebenezer Junction, GRA, Benin City. Just one visit will change your life forever. Pastor Jeffrey and Pastor Loveth Iyonowa, as well as the Happy Family of Miracle Assembly, expect to see you this week. Miracle Assembly, liberating people for quality living. You know why you should keep your joy? Because the devil knows. That the moment joy is tampered with, that family is going down. When we have established that the family is so important to God, and that society can never be different or separated from the happenings or the goings on in families. As the family goes, so society goes. The devil knows a place of joy and harmony. So here's what he does. He fights the family with the intention of destroying the joy. You know why he does that? Listen. The devil's greatest nightmare is covenant relationship. Hell's greatest fear is covenant relationship. And marriage, watch this, it's not a contract. Marriage is a covenant relationship. Yeah. And I think I did a teaching on covenant last month. Was it last month or two months ago? Yeah. We gave you a series on covenant. Hell's greatest fear is covenant relationship. And marriage is a covenant relationship. So the devil is catch thief of marriage. You know why? I'll tell you why. 
the greatest power on earth, hear me and hear me real good. The greatest power on earth is released on the platform of covenant relationships. The greatest power on earth, not in heaven, on earth, is released on the platform of covenant relationship. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, verses 18 to 20, Jesus speaking said, Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Verse 19, Again I say unto you, that if two of you, watch this now, if two of you, aha, shall agree on earth as touching anything, notice he said anything, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my father which is in heaven. Verse 20, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest, I mean the greatest power on earth is released, is unleashed on the platform of covenant relationships. That is why Satan fights families. One will chase a thousand, but two will put what? Ten thousand to flight. Watch this now. Naturally speaking, by arithmetic progression, one will chase a thousand, two will put two thousand. No. No. One will chase a thousand, but two that are in agreement. Their results will be exponential. 10,000. So here's what the enemy does. The strength of the covenant is predicated on agreement. It's not just two or three holding their hands. No. Touching. No. The key to unleashing the trigger for this covenant power is in the agreement. <laughs> no wonder. No wonder. In Amos chapter 3 verse 3, New Living Translation, but the old King James says, can two work together except they be agreed? But NLT puts it the way I like it. He says, can two people work together without agreeing on the direction? Can two people work together without agreeing on the direction? The answer is no. Marriage is a coming together of two people in agreement headed in the same direction. Now, I told you singles in the house, the reason or the basis on which you make a choice for marriage should not be because you love him or he loves you. No! It's where are you going? What's your destination? We call that vision in Christianity. Write the word relationship down. I've taught you this before. The word relationship is the same. It's an interesting word. It's a compound of two words. It means relation and ship. Relationship, relation and ship. It means two relations in the same ship relating to the same cargo. That's why it's called relationship. It's a term of agreement. Otherwise, one person will be thrown overboard. And that's what you call separation or divorce. The strength is in the agreement. So what does the devil do? He uses quarrels, disagreement, to drive a wedge, to fragment, to pulverize, to shatter the power that exists in covenant relationship. That's why most families are powerless, hollow, and empty. So, the man is praying for money, the wife is not in agreement, it's not going to work. The woman needs babies, the man is not in agreement, he's not working. Man of God, that's why when people come to me for prayers for kids, I always tell them, where's your spouse? I want to be sure if they are both in agreement because I experienced something like 12 or 13 years ago abroad. I never forget that experience. I went to a shop, my friend took me to a shop to buy a suit. When I got to this suit shop, the owner, nice guy, was showing me around. We we're talking about the different suits. We we're looking at them. And sitting on the other side was a beautiful lady. 
So my friend introduced me to the owner of the suit shop that this is my pastor friend from Africa. I came for a conference for us. Hmm. The lady that was sitting on the other side just stood up and walked straight to me and said, you're a pastor from Africa. I said, that's from Nigeria. He said, praise God. He said, can you please talk to my fiancé for me? I said, about what? So that we can agree, so that he can agree with me to have children when we marry. So I said, what's the matter? So the guy started laughing. So we dropped suit matter. The guy said, oh yeah, that's my girlfriend. We've been on for like four years or more at that time. He says, the only reason why we are not married is because she insists that we are going to have children when we marry. And I said, what's wrong with that? He said, I don't want children. But I said, really? He said, yeah. He said, I don't want children. I said, why? He said, children are necessary evil. I said, really? Then the next thing he said that blew me away. He said, I don't even know when my parents gave birth to me. I think they are stupid. So the girl said, exactly, this is where we've been for the last four or five years. He won't change his mind. So I said, well, he said, no. He said, he said, he said children, trouble. I won't have children. And the girl wants children. He doesn't want children. And before you think he's possessed, he's not. Before you think something is wrong with him, nothing is wrong with him. Because children is a choice. You can choose to have and choose not to exercise that right. But when God said be fruitful, he wasn't speaking to Africa and say no. <laughs> you and I know in 2050, 30 years from now, 31 years, then there will be 420 million people. My objective on Wednesday is will your children be able to compete at that level at that time? One of the things I said on Wednesday, in case you deliberately didn't come, now you have the opportunity to hear it is that it is not how powerful you are to give birth or how fruitful you are that determines how many kids you have. I established in my argument on Wednesday that it is your age at marriage that determines how many children you should have. So what's that? Get the message. Yes, I spoke about it. Your age. It was a very good message. In that message, I gave you the three stages of life, the morning, afternoon, and evening stages of life, and what happens in each stage. So you don't wake up at 80 and you are broke. Get that message on Wednesday. So let's come back to this. So when the man said that, I like, really? Left the shop. I think I bought one or two suits. A few months later, I called my friend who is a pastor who lives in that city. Oh, I said the, the lady couldn't take the relationship and she broke up and she left. Because the guy said, I don't want kids. And he was serious. Why did I get you this story? There are some women who want two or three or four. But as they are praying, oh Lord, I need a boy. The husband said, I can't sell it in the name of Jesus. In his heart. It's not in agreement. The husband is praying. Oh Lord, let the visa, let the visa to America happen. The wife is saying, I can't sell it in the name of Jesus. In her heart. Because she doesn't trust you going to America and not marrying Oibo. Because it is true. It happens. So the reason they are refusing, refusing, you better ask your wife, Una, are you really in support? You say, oh, you really want to hear the truth. There are some women who will not want their husband transferred out of Benin because it's a risk. See, I'm praying for them. This next transfer to Abuja, let them put my name. Say, hey, you dare Benin, we let them see you. Our Allah Abuja. Honey. You have disappeared. I'm just telling you the truth. So you better sit here because she's not sure. The story she'll be hearing later. I'm going on transfer for you. Is that how we go together or we stay here together? Abi? So when it comes to families, I like to ask. From that my experience with that guy, I like to ask, are you sure you people are in agreement with this thing? Some men don't want children now because they already have with their mother somewhere. When you investigate, you will find that the man don't get picking before. Because I said, everywhere quiet now. To say, now try, talk. <laughs> <laughs> so you are wondering. Somebody said, he won't go with me to the hospital. He won't go. He won't go. He won't go. So I said, ask her whether I get picking before. 
Because if it's not going for anything, there's something somewhere. He said, hey, I first talker. So they brought him to my office and I asked him. He said, no, pastor, I don't have. So I said, so? Do you want kids? He said, yes. So, so you are not showing it. I'm not telling you be worried. I'm telling you cooperate with your wife. I'm saying that to say that disagreement breaks, fragments, pulverizes the strength that covenant relationship unleashes in a family. Every evil pronouncement against your destiny, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Welcome to Miracle Assembly, a place where miracles are assembled and distributed. We have a mandate of liberating people for quality living. The Word of God comes alive through the unction of the Holy Spirit upon His servants, Pastor Jeffrey and Pastor Loveth Iyanawa, as they teach and preach weekly. We invite you to join us every Wednesday at 5 p.m. prompt and on Sundays for our first service at 7.30 at 147 Upper Owina Road by Wotubu Police Station off Argo Street via Ekewan Road, Benin City and for our second service at 9.15 a.m. at 54 Boundary Road before Ebenezer Junction, GRA, Benin City. Just one visit will change your life forever. Pastor Jeffrey and Pastor Love F. Iyonowa, as well as the happy family of Miracle Assembly, expect to see you this week. Miracle Assembly, liberating people for quality living.